Welcome to Jake and Trev Review Everything Live. I'm Jake. And I'm Trev. And uh, you're joining us here in week four. It's uh, It's been a whirlwind four weeks here at Jake and Trev Review Everything Live. Woo. Real real crazy go nuts. Indeed. And uh, we got some stuff to talk to you about this week. Lots of stuff to go over. Um, so we got some... Uh, have you seen this? Have you heard about this? Some announcements. We got a poll going. Um, you know, lots of good stuff here. So, uh, so uh, <clears throat> we'll we'll hold on the poll until uh, we get some more people here. But uh, let's see. Let's let's start with a question here. That's um, always a good call. Let's start with questions. We got a question from Tom Marriott. He says, "My suggestion for have you seen this? Heard about this? Have you seen this? Have you heard about this? Um, it was an article about." Um, uh, Doctor Who fans mm -hmm. that had gotten into a tussle with some Star Wars fans. Apparently, they both had groups in in a town, and uh, they both uh, were at a convention together. And some harsh words were uh, traded mm -hmm. off, and the police were called. And they're both trying to work it out outside of their respective groups. But uh, yeah, uh, yeah. There's there there has always been contention between groups. I mean, most notoriously between Star Trek and Star Wars fans. So, um, I, I, I don't know. Uh, his, his question goes on, it, it, yeah. If there was a fandom or a franchise that you, that's me, Trev, or Jake, uh, and he goes on to write that, or you, Trev, if you are reading this, Jake, if not, please disregard the sentence unless you've already begun to read this. Then stopping mid-sentence would be silly, so I'll end it. Okay, Trev? Cool. Um, what would be the franchise that we are a part of, and uh, and why? Um, well, oh, gosh. Um, who do I identify <laughs> with most as a uh, group? Well, I guess I would probably say Whovians. I, I, I'm a bit of a Whovian. Uh, I own a sonic screwdriver. I bought my fian my fiance a sonic screwdriver. Um, there's been talk of TARDIS Blue. Uh, you know, I mean, we're we're kind of somewhat invested there, and it's certainly uh, a rich enough uh, tapestry of fandom that you could definitely have a lot of opportunity there. Um, but am I passionate enough about it to get into a confrontation with Star Wars fans? No. No, I, I like Star Wars just fine too. I've I've had my stages where I've I've wanted to be a Padawan, uh, where I've wanted to become the the Jedi Knight. Uh, but I can't help but feeling like the Jedi Council and Doctor Who both would be very disappointed in their respective fans uh, oh, yeah, for absolutely. acting this way. Yeah, for for as much as both of those shows teach to tolerance and yeah, that's is, isn't that strange? That's like an ongoing theme in most like science fiction programs. Yeah, it's you know. Hmm. Be, be tolerant of other groups, even if they are Star Wars fans or I, uh, Whovians. I have, I find I've never, I've never heard that before. Really? Yeah. Well, that's 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 what they're called. Whovians. Whovians. I as soon as you said that, I was thinking Doctor Seuss. Oh. The Whovians down in Whoville. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, I, I don't know. I, I'd have to say my my fandom. I don't really roll with any uh, nerd groups. But, uh, I don't know, back in the day I was part of the, kind of part of the console wars, like in middle school or whatever. Mm -hmm. I had a Sega, warrior. which is weird because a lot of people, you know, a lot of people that I know personally now had Super Nintendos, which uh, arguably, now that I have both systems and a fair amount of games for both, uh, the Super Nintendo did have a lot of better titles that held up the test of time better than the Sega did. Mm -hmm. But uh, at the time I was total, total Sega warrior. Mm-hmm. SNES stinks. Sega's awesome. And it's dumb butts. Yeah, so I mean, you know, there's there's console wars. I was part of the console wars back in the day. Mm -hmm. But then when they, you know, when the Xbox came out, the PS2 it was like, well, whichever one has good games, I don't really care. So <laughs> that's pretty much how it's been for me ever since. That's pretty much it. But um, yeah, that's. I guess that's as close to uh, coming to blows over it. I've never, you know, I've had arguments, but I've never, you know, threatened anybody with physical violence or anything over video games. Right, absolutely. So, maybe a few controllers. <laughs> I got over that, though. Court-appointed whatnots. <laughs> 
Uh, let's see. So uh, if you're out there, if you're watching, uh, feel free to ask us any questions. We're going to do our, have you seen this, have you heard about this, our man of the week, man or woman of the week. Uh, if I might take a little brief aside here. Last yeah, week we, we, of course, had our third episode, Jake and Trevor, Everything Live, and it was it was a quiet one. Yeah. I, I'm willing to be a we big talked, man and admit it. We talked about, um, uh, what the hell is his name? Richard the Cat. Richard the Cat. Yeah, Richard the Cat. And, and, if, and if you still haven't gone to see that, that's go to Richard the Cat's Tumblr. It's mm-hmm. but, just, uh, um, but uh, as some of you may or may not know, we broadcast from Michigan. And unfortunately, I'm not big on the sports balls. Um, I'm not I, big on game sticks either. So. Uh, right, so... Uh, but apparently the Detroit Red Wings were playing in uh, their seventh game of a series last Wednesday, and um, that that being said, it really is no surprise that we had apparently that. nobody was on the internet. So it happens. Yeah, it's a, it's a thing, you know. So um, so yeah, so yeah, if, you know, if you gotta go see your 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 stick pucks or whatever, then we're mm-hmm. not gonna we're not gonna get all upset at you over it. Mm-hmm. So. There's yeah, that. and your your basket fields. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. These things... A uh, Detroit Red Wings game uh, matters to many in Michigan. Or just just not this one, particularly. Yeah. I, I like hey, uh, go go Wings! Don't get me wrong, guys. I you know I don't I don't not want the wing, Wings to win. It's just uh, you know not invested. Not invested particularly. Okay, let's uh, let's take another question here. Uh, this one uh, from Christopher Jandro, who wants to know what video game has the best soundtrack slash score, and why. Well, I mean, there's different qualifiers. You know, I feel like I people who watch this get to figure out that we have like uh, certain fetishes for for like a set few number of games, and it's like what what constitutes a good game soundtrack. Well, something that I think kind of should qualify is can you listen to the soundtrack just by itself? Like, would you would you consider just like putting the OST on your on your playlist or something and just kind of letting it go? Um, and if that's the qualifier, uh, Final Fantasy VII was an amazing oh. soundtrack. I can sit and listen to a Final Fantasy VII soundtrack whenever. I'd have to say my qualifier would be um, because it's in a video game and sometimes you play it you know longer than a regular song would take. Um, it would have to be listenability over and over and over again. Mm-hmm. And for that, I would have to say my personal uh, OST would have to be spread out all of the over all of the Mega Man games. Mm, yeah. Um, they, he, you know, each each character has its own song, be it you know Wood, Woodman or or Cutsman or you know whoever. Well. They, but they, but also the songs kind of. Uh, reflect on their characters, the, the characters themselves. So it gives a different feel for each level. It's not the same level music over and over again, which is nice. Right. Every time that you go into a different level with a different boss, there's a different song, and then usually the song that accompanies you going through Dr. Wily's castle inevitably um, usually has uh, pretty intense uh, music. Mm-hmm. Very, you're gonna, you're about to save the world music, and, and I always really enjoyed that. And I could, I could sit down and listen to those. As well, but mm-hmm. I also that's part of the reason I got into chip tunes in the first place. So, mm-hmm. uh, versatility is another thing. Um, like for example, uh, here recently I've been really heavily into the uh, Far Cry Three Blood Dragon soundtrack. Oh yeah, Power Glove. Uh, we we talked about that on our season finale. Power Glove is just it's awesome. out of control. They're out of control. Um, and uh, but yeah, I mean the the music they use in that has a general uh, evocation of that '80s action feel. Um, so while I'm listening to it, I don't necessarily have to sit and think about Blood Dragon. I can think of I can set uh, the movie Commando in my brain to to that music, and it works just fine. Yeah. Um, or you know, doing whatever I do. But anyway, uh, so yeah, those those are kind of my tops. Well, let's uh, let's do. You wanted to start the. Uh, have you seen this? Have you heard about this? About uh, Game of Thrones. So why don't you, uh, yeah. Um, while we have one viewer. <laughs> well, we, well, we just have the one of you. Thanks for stopping in. Um, have you seen this? Have you heard about this? Game of Thrones. Uh, surely you've at least heard of this as a thing. But uh, this last week had a particularly brutal ending. Now. I'm not going to spoil it. This is, you know, a big series. 
A lot of people still haven't seen it. Some people won't see it until the season DVD comes out in a few months or whatever. So uh, I just want to say this because it's interesting. A lot of people are saying is not only was it a serious, very serious and brutal end uh, to the episode, but um, some have called it the most shocking and brutal thing ever put on television. Um, which, given some of the things we've seen on television, and especially from from HBO, yeah, no, H. I mean, it's on HBO, right? Which technically isn't TV; it's HBO. It's HBO. But uh, yeah, that's. I mean, I I didn't see the episode, but I've actually heard secondhand a lot of the things that happen, and that does sound pretty brutal. <laughs> like it. Um, and to be pretty brutal. And what's most interesting to me is is that they actually made it more brutal in the TV show than the scene was as depicted in the book. Oh. Um, okay. Things happen to more people in the TV show than they did in the book. Um, you know, and and they really don't they flinch. Really, yeah. They don't flinch very much on it. Um, not, not a lot of cutaways. No, where, where no. Where it's like, oh, that person got killed off camera. Was it just like? No, face, they don't. Or? They don't really kill anyone off camera in that. And really, just like right in your face. Right in your face. Wow. Um, that sounds brutal, and I haven't even seen it. Um, and I don't want to go any farther than that. Like it's describing events as they took place. Um, but yeah, no, it, it, it was really brutal. And uh, if if you watched it. Uh, viewer one, uh, we would be interested <laughs> in hearing what your what your uh, opinion on the matter is. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, if anybody's seen it, or you know, any anybody, even if you haven't seen it, if you want to chime in about what do you think is too brutal for a television show, even if it is HBO, which isn't technically television, then. Although um, I, I heard a funny, I, I heard a funny uh, meme joke. Ah. Oh, it it was a lovely day for that, uh, Patrick. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> no, uh, I, I heard a particularly uh, or saw an amusing uh, meme photo. It was uh, George R. R. Martin's picture, and it says uh, uh, George R. R. Martin can't use Twitter because he killed all 148 characters. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, uh, I as as someone who has written himself before, I really admire George R. R. Martin and his unflinching ability to just murder people that you know <laughs> these characters that you've grown to care about and follow through the story um, and you know uh, as you have told me many times when I've sought uh, writing advice from you and how to take handle a situation involving characters like that uh, as Stephen King would often say oh yeah you gotta kill your babies you have I to kill I think you got that from somebody else but that's where I originally read it was in uh, on writing Stephen King's on writing sure fantastic you gotta, read you gotta kill your babies so yeah, that's I mean you know that that makes a lot of sense. You can't if you've ever seen a movie kind of like um, how it's kind of how I felt about the Expendables. Mm. You know where the movie is literally called the Expendables, and everyone in that movie is so you know they're normally upfront action stars, so they're all elbowing each other for screen time, mm -hmm. and then at the end of the movie, like uh, spoiler alert, if you haven't seen the Expendables, I don't know. I, at they, point, weren't, they weren't that expensive. No, because even the people that you thought had died did not die in the end. It was basically like they even just came on camera for like two minutes at the end and were like, oh, by the way, I'm not dead. Even though that thing that happened to me was pretty fatal, I think. Right, yeah. <laughs> it was it was a little it was a little bit of fairy tale magic at the end of Expendables yeah. too. And, and you know, that was the I that was the problem with that movie because all of the stars were former action stars or current action stars. So I assume everybody was like, Well, I'm not gonna die in this movie. Oh well, I'm the star, so I'm not going to die in this movie. And it's like, and I'm sure somebody was like, all right, I'll die in this movie, but not for real. And they're like, fine, die. you know what, fine, we'll take it. Fine, nobody we'll dies. It. That's fine, we'll whatever. Take, we'll, we'll, take, we'll take the fake death over nobody gets harmed or injured or is anywhere near death's door. Uh, let's just do that. Whatever. Right. But yeah, it's, fr it's frustrating to watch a movie like that. It's like, well, then there aren't any stakes, mm -hmm. you know? you mm -hmm. got, you got to raise the stakes. you got to be like... It, it, it's like if you're thinking about writing like from the point of a despot you know I'm gonna make an example of somebody to show you I'm serious <laughs> I'm gonna write this character dead because mm -hmm. I'm serious well, and I guess uh, before we move on one last final thought it was one of the most brutal things ever put on television um, because it was depicting an extraordinarily brutal sequence of events and they could have flinched and cut the camera away and had it happen off off screen, but 
it's HBO and they're allowed to do that sort of thing. So, uh, and to really press upon you, the viewer, how brutal and messed up what was happening, I think that actually showing it was used to uh, proper advantage. So that's my thought. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, also, uh, I got a. Have you seen this? Have you heard about this? Oh, nice. Just a little bit of industry uh, news. Uh, everybody has been talking about. Um, and this will lead into my other thing, but uh, everybody's been talking a lot about the new Star Wars movie. It's like it did come out in 2015. They got all the original cast. 2016, on, uh, 2017, possibly 2018. 2018. Yeah, uh, but they've been talking a lot about that. Uh, I don't know. I think Disney's going to pull it all together for better or worse within the next year. Um, but uh, there's a couple uh, couple things about that. Um, apparently, one thing is that they're talking about, uh, and I'm not super familiar with this band, I'm sure I've heard a few songs and I didn't think they were anything terrible. They weren't like Nickelback levels of unlistenability. But uh, Florence and the Machine, uh, Florence of Florence and the Machine is uh, in talks to be one of the main characters. And, I, and it, you know, they haven't even told us anything about the story. It's like, the characters you love are going to be in there, and then some new people. And it's like, okay, well, you're not going from book canon or anything, so we have no leg to stand on as far as uh, the, uh, figuring out who or what or when or why anything is going to happen in this movie. There's really no speculation that you can make about this, because if they're making it an all-new all thing, then, you know, as far as a, being a fan of the series is concerned, it's a really shitty time because they can tell you who's going to be, you know, it's going to be uh, whoever is going to be in this movie. And it doesn't really matter because it's like, well, uh, what is their character going to be? Why, why would it matter to me who's in the movie if I don't know what role they're playing? Mm -hmm. That's usually what, you know, oh, this person was cast for this role. And, and then that's where you get to poo-poo it all you want as a fan. But you don't really get a good sense of... So it's like, I guess she would be good as an actress. <laughs> That's really the only thing, mm -hmm. you know. But, you know, obviously they've been working out the buzz. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic. I'll say that. Cautiously optimistic. Uh, I, I've said it before. I think I even said it in the first episode of Jake and Trevor View Everything Live. I'm pretty sure we're going to see some real, real market saturation of uh, the Star Wars brand in the next few years. In fact, even though we all thought we've seen lots of Star Wars come at us before, this will be unprecedented levels of Star Wars saturation, oh, guys. Yeah. Well, it's 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 the it's the mouse, man. It's the mouse. The house of mouse wants it. Yeah. And it wants it bad. Oh, so bad. And and that's a real shame because I think that what the the, the, the most important thing to do I think would be to take your time. But when they have this ambitious rush schedule, new Star Wars movie every year. It's like every year. Yeah, no, they're gonna really ring this one out until mm -hmm. there ain't no more to ring out. And compared to you know, obviously, uh, Trevor and I both feel this way. I'm gonna talk for Trev on this. Sure, I don't really say I'm not going to, but I'm going to. I'm sure uh, whatever he'll say, I'll agree with. <laughs> uh, episodes one through three sucked. Big old donkey dick. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, I mean, mm -hmm. anything that they put out at this point, if they have a competent writer and a competent director, it's got to be eons better than mm -hmm. whatever we've seen in the last 10, uh, 10 but, years. Uh, uh, um, but, J.J. <laughs> Abrams? Well, here's, uh, here's Star Trek Into Darkness. Have, have you guys seen this? Have you heard about this? <laughs> Um, no, no spoilers, but no spoilers. Um, but leading leading that in, Jake and I both saw Star Trek Into Darkness here, and as we're currently not uh, putting out review episodes, and by the time that we would be again, it would be a little bit stale at that point. Um, I feel like we should talk about our thoughts of yeah, uh, Star we, Trek we here. Yeah, we throw down like a non spoilery. Yeah, non spoilers. Yeah. Um, if you, I. Uh, well, can I, I... I want to do one thing before we get into this. Go ahead. We'll, we'll, we'll do a little mini-review of Star Trek Into Darkness here. No spoilers in a second. Um, I wanted to bring up my uh, Person of the Week. Ah, oh, Person of the Week. Because this... Jake and Trev review everything so, live. So it's we're going to back, we're gonna back it up week. and then go off on a tangent and, sure. then, and then get back into that mm -hmm. timeline. Throw in reverse. But um, uh, Person of the Week, George Lucas. What? It's George Lucas. But my Person of the Week is George Lucas because he... Finally smartened up and sold Star Wars to Disney. And I the, I think the only news that I've really heard this week was that he is now the second highest 
shareholder of Disney stock behind Steve Jobs. Wow. And you know what's awesome about that? He gets to keep all of the money. Like, he got, he got what was it, $2 billion in cash for selling off Star Wars, the franchise. And he also got two... Uh, equivalent to 2 billion shares of stock, which is something like 2% of Disney stock. Mm -hmm. And he's the second highest person that's a shareholder in Disney stock behind Steve Jobs, which, you know, excludes entities, business entities, and things like that. Um, But my point is, is that all of this uh, speculation is happening about the new Star Wars and stuff, and nobody gets to blame him for it. At all, uh-huh. he gets he he is he is out. He you know it's like well I'm still going to be profit. You know if Disney does really well with the Star Wars movie, then I'm going to profit off of it because I have all the stock. And you know I he's still attached to uh, was it Industrial Light Magic or uh, Skywalker Skywalker Sound mm-hmm. and right. all that stuff. So he's still doing all that. But as soon as somebody says like oh that's going to stuck for Star Wars, damn you George! Oh wait, you're not even attached to this anymore. And we, no. He is out of the crosshairs. What a smart guy. <laughs> I feel like he kind of threw J.J. Abrams under the bus on this He threw this everyone one. under the bus. It's like, you know what? Fuck it. You guys deal with it. I oh, you guys think you can make that. a better Star Wars? Fine. Go ahead. <laughs> see how it works out for you. You let me know. I'll be over here counting my money. <laughs> I mean, he, you know, and he was the first person that, like, merchandised movies mm-hmm. where he was like, let's make action figures. Let's make a Chewie and a C-3PO. And everybody was like, nobody's going to want stupid movie action figures. Are you kidding me? Mm-hmm. That's dumb. And he was, like, dumb all the way to the bank. Yes. <laughs> so, I guess in that way, uh, George Lucas has showed us that he may be the smartest guy in the room. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Say, say what you will about his character creation or his or how la- Or how lazy he is in, in creation of movies. Oh, or... God. But, yeah, say say anything you want about that, but he is I mean, a shrewd business What man. kind of person just, like, sits there with a cup of coffee and just kind of lets everything happen around him? I you know? You know? And then, what, what kind of person does that? I don't that? even know. Like, uh, yeah. Oof. Yeesh. There but for the grace of God go we. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, go, going into the, uh, Star Trek Into Darkness. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Star Trek Into Darkness. Um... Gosh, it, it, I, I feel like if they were going to make this a mystery, they should have uh, done a better job of it. Um, again, no spoilers, but I'll give you this. One of the rumors that was going around pretty heavily beforehand turned out to be totally true. And I feel like, it, you know, I, I really want to say it, even though it is technically a spoiler... In the movie, it's not really... Uh, it's, Here, well, it's, it's well, tough to well, dance around. We, it's tough well, to dance We'll around. ask our viewers. Viewers, uh, let us know. Should we spoil this? Should we spoil just this? This, one, this, thing. Just this, this one, one thing? Just this one thing. This one thing? Just this one thing. Can we just have this one Can thing? Can we have just this? A little, just a little... Th- just the thing. Any, anybody? Yeah, let what, us what know. What do you guys think? Let us know. Should we... Um, but to continue, without going into spoilers, um, my expectations were brought pretty low before seeing it. Uh, because so, I had seen it and I told Trev that I didn't like it at all and he probably wouldn't either. And there was a point where I thought the movie was over and then it kept going. And the part where it kept going redeemed it about that much for me. I didn't totally hate this movie, but it just feels like they're going back to the boneyard to pick over a little bit more and see if they can get a little bit more meat off that skeleton. Well, here's here's my overall thought on it in two parts. The first part being that they are, for having established in the first Star Trek, in the 2009 Star Trek, that they are, it is completely different this time. They, the way, they guys, have split this off. By the way, guys, this is what we're doing when we go off screen. We're, we're, getting, we're, we're getting coffee. Fact, well, here. Over here. Well, watch out for the keyboard. Uh, hot coffee. Oh no! And not the sexy GTA kind oh, of hot no. coffee. The not Bernie so McDonald's on your laps kind of sort of hot coffee. If I spill this, it's Sue Town. Um, no, the uh, the two problems that I had are that for having established themselves as a new movie, as a new timeline, they basically said, "Oh, this is actually Kirk and actually Spock and all those guys." But somebody fucked up the timeline, and now we're doing our own thing. They draw a lot. From old TV Star Trek and old movie Star Trek. And that... It it feels like when you basically set it up so that you have carte blanche to make whatever Star Trek you want, you're drawing a lot from original Star Trek. 
where it's like, well, it's different, but it's parallel. Eh. It's like, well, you got to pick one side or the other. You're either original Star Trek or your new Star Trek, and that's just, you know. Ugh. All right, well, uh, the consensus no. is in. <laughs> well, uh, it's, it's recorded, so I don't, I, I don't, I don't know if I... I I'll, uh, I don't know. All right. Um, tell you what. Uh, if you're watching... The this. time code, uh, I would say skip ahead to 2530 if you don't want to hear us talk about the big spoiler. Okay? It's going to give us about 30 seconds to talk okay. about it and go. Okay, guys, it's con. It's just con for no reason because they are out of ideas. Yep, that's it. It's con, and you know, and everybody speculated that it was going to be con, and then it was con, except for it was con in all the wrong ways. All of the wrong ways. In fact, a couple nights ago, we sat down and we watched... Uh, the legit con. Yeah, we watched the original episode of the Star Trek series, and then also uh, Star Trek II, Wrath of Khan. And um, nothing that Benedict Cumberbatch... They don't bring up... Uh, okay, there's 30 seconds. Damn it. Uh, they don't bring up the eugenics war. They don't bring up... Yeah, they don't bring up a lot of things that, that would have been right. relevant to the episode. Right. Uh, for those of you who somehow really enjoy Star Trek but don't know what the eugenics war is, I, I got nothing for you, son. Yeah. Uh, I can do nothing for you, son. It's one of those big shameful events that everyone kind of brings up in hushed tones every once yeah. in a while. Um, and uh, But yeah, um, but in a very unrelated note, I assure you, viewers, um, we were watching Craving Some More Legitimate Trek um, we watched some episodes of uh, the original series, and one of them that we watched was uh, Space Seed, which was the uh, starting point of the storyline that went into The Wrath of Khan, uh, the classic number two in the original yeah. motion picture trilogy, or trilogy series. Um, maybe it should have been a trilogy. Um, but anyway, uh, you do not, if, unless you've seen this, you do not know how awesome McCoy is. Oh, God. You don't know how yeah, serious. I, I wish we could cut clips into this episode because oh, there's my. a scene where uh, Khan wakes up and has, like, the scalpel to his throat, and then he's also holding his throat, so he's like, uh. And McCoy just still Cool it. as a cucumber? Just just stares him right down, and I don't even know... I don't know if we can do it justice. I kind of yeah, just want to say, just, go watch it. He was just like, yeah, no, it's... Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, go, go watch that episode. It's you, on Netflix. It's on Netflix, it's you on guys. Netflix. You I'm have imagining Netflix. you're arguing with me right now. I ain't got time to go watch no stuff. It's surf. one episode. It's half an hour. Deal with it. Just watch it. Just it's watch good. It. Mm -hmm. But yeah, McCoy. From Bad that, the most Bad awesome ass. I've ever seen him. Hands down. Yeah, so stone definitely. cold. So stone cold. It was It was pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. The uh, The second problem that I have is that kind of ties into the first problem, which is that... There's no companion series for the movies. Part of the reasons that, you know, and the series had been done before the movies, but part of the reason that the series, uh, or part of the reason that the movies had something to draw off of because they had original material from the series. And I think with the new rebooted Star Trek, because they've, instead of making a new ca a new crew, or a new anything, really, I mean, you know, obviously you can't do it after, like, uh, Enterprise or anything, but, um... I mean, I like me some Bacula, but, you know. You can't, put, you can't put butts in the chat. You can't put butts it's in the chat? It's inappropriate language, Trevor. Oh, my so, goodness. No, no we're going to stand on the page. Um, Just erase it. By the way, guys. Get rid of butts. Nope. You said jerks, too. Jerks is inappropriate well, like, language? You know, it could be, you know. Jerk is a noun. It is not inappropriate. Just put faces. You know what? Whatever. <laughs> he knows what we were going to say. Faces. We were going to say jerk butts. Jerk butts. Jerk butts. Mm -hmm. That's a great it's a great insult. Because you can't really get mad if you get called a jerk butt. Because it's like, you know. Well, you're 12 years old. So, <laughs> who's the winner here? Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, the, uh, yeah, there's no companion series to Star Trek right now. All they have is the original series, which is what the original series of movies draw, drew off of. So there's not really any like for the series to stand on. It really did come off as trying to appeal to the audience that came to watch a Star Trek movie and also appeal to the audience that came in and wanted to munch popcorn and watch explosions. So it's tough. Uh, I, I didn't really enjoy it at all. There were too many plot holes. Uh, there's too much uh, character development that could have been 
uh, in lieu of a uh, nonstop turtle ride. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, they didn't. You know, watching watching Rathacon again, they really did know how to pace it well. Mm-hmm. I mean, even the last like ship battle, mm-hmm. it's not like they're you know firing holes into the other ships or anything like that. It's just like a very like tense situation, and I I, I prefer that to the one in uh, Into Darkness. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, let's let's, go, let's, let's go take another question. And and it, it, if you are in the chat, if you are joining us right now, um, definitely uh, throw down on some questions. Feel free to throw one out there for us. But we're gonna continue we might on. just pick your question. Absolutely, maybe. So we're gonna we're gonna get to some questions that we have uh, written down here. So uh, Tom Marriott asks uh, best film soundtrack, be it score or songs, and what makes it so ruddy good. Hmm. Ooh, um, well, let me let me answer that with a series of answers, like a jerk. Uh, like a jerk. Censor button. that, you stream. <laughs> <laughs> uh, jerk butt. Jerk butt. No. Um, great movie soundtracks slash scores. Um, the Thing, John Carpenter's The Thing. Oh, yeah. very minimalistic. Well, any any but John Carpenter, really. Actually, yeah, any Jordan John Carpenter movie tends to have a pretty fantastic score. Um, you you can't go wrong with the classics. Uh, John Williams uh, just churns out um, totally appropriate, uh, memorable soundtracks. Um, gosh, I, I I feel Jurassic Park. I feel bad for being so mainstream half the time. Back I, to the Future. I gotta get more indie. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. Um, I remember when we were in high school, Trevor had the Snatch soundtrack, and we listened mm, to that. That is a great soundtrack. We listen to that all the time. Thank you. Thank you for reminding me. Yes. I, I just thinking about movie soundtracks. I've never really... Uh, I I think one of the few ones that I owned was uh, Royal Tenenbaum soundtrack, mm-hmm. and that had a lot of uh, Nico, Velvet Underground, uh, a lot of older... Uh, songs on there. I like those a lot. Pretty much anything Wes Anderson does, he has a lot of like classic rock tunes. Mm-hmm. So I always enjoy those. Yeah, you can usually count on um, uh, Quentin Tarantino for a pretty solid oh, okay. soundtrack. Uh, sure. Particularly in Django Unchained. Like, uh, if you oh, would have said, yeah. if you we're gonna put a uh, a song uh, from from you know like a, an actual song in this, I would have been. Well, now hold on a minute, Quentin. This is a set. <laughs> this is set in the eighteen hundreds. I, I don't know if that's going to fly. It worked. Jim yeah. Croce in the West. I didn't oh, think yeah. it was going to work. It looked. It worked awesome. There was some Tupac in one of the fight scenes. That mm-hmm. was pretty sweet. Mm-hmm. Oh my god! Yeah, they, um, they had an excellent soundtrack. It did. Yeah, the the modern music uh, juxtaposed with the uh, period action didn't clash for me at all. Yeah. If you if you want to dig uh, into the uh, Jake and Trev archives, we actually have uh, the first. Uh, review we did was an audio review still on YouTube for some reason was that, was that the first one? yeah we did Django Unchained and then we did uh, Gangster Squad yeah, Gangster Squad yeah, yeah so um, if you want to go in the Wayback Machine and talk about listen to an awful awful show please <laughs> please don't I don't want you <laughs> but, to but if you have to still don't I don't. still don't if you're it's a, up there if you want if you're to a com- if you now, now if you're a completionist Still don't because it's not very good. No, we, um, we even numbered our episodes like after the first three. Yeah, so it was like episode one, Streets of Fire, and we did three reviews before that. So mm-hmm. they are they are uh, un, un unrefined at best. So uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, but yeah, uh, excellent movie regardless. Um, so good question, Tom. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, thanks for that, bro. Okay. Patrick, if you're still there, ask us a question. Okay, uh, Vanessa Coleman. Writes, so if they, they, are evil Jake and Trev. Oh, we're not. We're not evil Jake and Trev. Um, so if evil Jake and Trev are evil Jake and Trev, and we're neutral Jake, or Trev and Jake, then are there good Jake and Trev? Well, uh, you know, I hate to suggest that you haven't been paying attention, <laughs> Vanessa. Um, but no, um, it's been stated that, that, that he's good and I'm neutral. So I guess yeah, it was in the first. It was in the first uh, story episode. It was episode seven of the trailer. Round. We'll throw you all a bone here and say that we're we're not good, Jake and Trev, or neutral, Jake and Trev. We're just Jake and Trev. Yeah, we're 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 the prime. We're we're Jake and Trev prime. Yeah. In, as a way to think about it, we're the six one six. Right, and all the other ones are different reflections and aspects, and you know different kind of turns on that. Um, so, but the real 
The real root of your question, however, is, is there a good Jake and Trip? Well, we did... There may be. Because there we know be. we know that in a few episodes, if you have been watching, that there have been another group of Jake and Trebs that have been trying to contact us. But we're so dumb, we just never see it coming. <laughs> we we always just miss it by that much. So uh, you might you might catch those in the in the last few episodes of the the first season. Uh, there are a little a few hints that there are more than just uh, Jake and Trev and evil Jake and Trev. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there is an evil Jake and Trev. Cer certainly, and oh, yeah. and regular and Jake dicks. and Trev, <laughs> obviously, good Jake and Trev, maybe good chance. Possibly. There's a good chance. Oh, here's a question. Uh, the wife wants quick of uh, the painting on the wall. Ah, the painting on the wall. Oh. Hmm. Well, in a previous episode, uh, Patrick's of the, wife of the, of, the, of the live show. On a previous episode of live show, it was. Pose to us uh, who the lovely lady on the wall is. If it's my girlfriend, if it's Jake's girlfriend, and the truth is, is that no, it is neither one of our girlfriends. That's uh, that's Laura Palmer. <laughs> she was so special. <laughs> <laughs> Why is he dead? <laughs> Dozy 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 uh, Ashley Poetasy says, Have you guys been watching Fetch Quest at all on the Geek and Sundry channel via YouTube land? What do you think of it so far? Well, well we... I'm going to combine this, actually, with a, Have you seen this? Have you heard about this? Geek and Sundry, have you seen this? Have you heard about this? Uh, Felicia Day. Uh, I don't know if uh, who's familiar with uh, Felicia Day. If you're uh, watching this, there's a good chance you know who Felicia Day is. Um, yes, yeah, she's she's got a lovely singing voice, and uh, she's she's particularly tied to the geek community so much so that she's uh, you know done this geek and sundry thing where well, she, uh, most notably she's a partner in it anyway. Yeah, I mean, most, I'm not going to call it hers, but most notably, her star turn happened with. Um, what the hell was the name of that show? Um, Dr. Horrible Sing-Along Blog? No. 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 Uh, uh, the Guild? The Guild. The Guild. Um, there was a very long-running series, The Guild. She stars in it. Um, it was originally put up online during the writer's strike of, what was it, 07? Mm -hmm. And uh, that was a big time for people to show their chops uh, on being able to create things without the backing of uh, Hollywood in general. Mm -hmm. So th that was a you know Doctor Doctor Horrible Sing Along blog, the Guild. Uh, there were a number of other things that came out around the same time that kind of showed up. You know, I think that's where we got um, Funny or Die as well started mm. up around that same time. There's a lot of things that we enjoy now that happened because uh, the studios weren't paying their writers properly. Mm -hmm. So we we definitely. Um, but yeah, uh, Fetch Quest, that's... Uh, that's what we're talking about, yes. Uh, Fetch Quest from uh, the Geek and Sundry site. Um, yes, Poetasy, we have been taking a look at that. Uh, it's pretty funny stuff. I liked it. I, I, yeah. I LOL'd at least once or twice while watching it. Yeah, it's it's very it's a short format that's kind of just an overarching discussion about one thing or another. Yeah, pretty we'll eclectic. Um, uh, you know, a lot of different sort of styles. Uh I kind of like that they don't just stick to one thing. It's kind of a little bit all over the place within the general topic. Yeah. It's an animation, so they can do a little more. Um, and the, the little dance or little song routine. Yeah, they have the a song of... at the end of every episode. It's like a parody song, very mm -hmm. Weird Al, about mm -hmm. whatever they're talking about. Um, for instance, we had uh, the first one we watched was about uh, indie games. Mm -hmm. And they made a lot of humorous observations about indie games. Most notably uh, that if you don't get it, then it's an indie game. Mm -hmm. But because it's an indie game, you'll say that you got it. And that, that's why it's brilliant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a very hipster uh, kind of thing. But the song at the end was, uh, I think, Radioactive mm -hmm. by uh, ch uh, Stabbing Dragons or Chasing Dragons mm -hmm. or whatever dragons. You know, that song. I remember that song pretty implicitly because it was played at the end of uh, um, which is it's that terrible Stephanie Meyer movie about aliens. 
Uh, yeah, the uh, the, host. the host. The host. Yeah, they use that song in the end of the credits. They also the use that song in an episode of Arrow when uh, when Ollie and his uh, best girl start uh, making out hard. That's a making out hard song. I can see that. Yeah, it's very you know it's got the. It has the workings of a making out song. But yeah, they parody that song for indie games, and then uh, they do like Gangnam Style for zombies. They do a whole thing about zombies and video game culture, and mm-hmm. how it's kind of over, you know. Hey, ask anybody who plays video games normally, and they'll tell you that video that zombies and video games are pretty much played out at this point. But yeah, they, they had a bunch of good topics. They had a bunch of, you know. Yeah, it's, it's, worth, a, a it's worth a shot. So, uh, if you are watching and you haven't checked out uh, Fetch Quest over at Geek and Sundry, I would recommend it. Yeah. Uh, Patrick asks, uh, speaking of Twin Peaks, do you think Eureka was the next evolution of Twin Peaks? Mayhaps a homage? An homage? An homage? Homage? Um, yes and no. Um, I, I can see some parallels in there. There's uh, some, like, the, the prevalency of diner scenes, uh, for one. Um, the kind of whole centered on a very, very strange town. But I guess if I was going to separate, and and maybe it's not right for me to try to separate these things, but one's more rooted in science fiction and the other one's more rooted in the supernatural. Uh, Twin Peaks, I feel, like having a more supernatural root than than that. Um, but I can see how it was certainly uh, an, an influence on Eureka. Yeah, I feel like it was like a, a spice in the, you know, like, mm-hmm. you, you'll see a lot of filmmakers take cues from other filmmakers, and, and writers will take cues from other writers and stuff like that. I can see that it's heavily influenced by Twin Peaks, but as far as, uh, I could see kind of an homage. Mm-hmm. Am- uh, homage. And, homage. And homage. actually, uh, go, speaking of Twin Peaks again, going back to uh, our first question about uh, fandoms that you feel that you're a part of compared to other fandoms, um... I'm a bookhouse boy. Oh, yeah, yeah. I guess I totally forgot about it. Yeah, I'm a bookhouse boy. We bookhouse boys. Yeah. What's up? Um, and, uh, you know, there's the, the standard ritual for watching any episode of Twin Peaks is, is that you got to have a cup of great coffee. Oh yeah. Let's take a look, see if there's anything. Uh, we got Oh, uh, Tom Marriott wants to know... Uh, he says, I recently watched Lilo and Stitch the movie. Enough about you, Tom. Come on. I don't want to hear it. Um, <laughs> Jeez. And he cried like a man on the cusp of manhood getting kicked in the knackers. And for uh, those of you who aren't British, um, those are testicles. Um, so in any case, can films and TV still make you cry? Or are you hard and cold inside like some igneous rock? If so, what was the last one to make you well up? Well, you know, it's interesting. We, this is also connected with everything we've talked about. Uh, I watched uh, with Jake Wrath of Khan, Star Trek II, the other day. And I am not ashamed to admit that every time, at the end, in the funeral scene, when... when okay, when hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's, let's, let's do this like... The, you're you watching the movie, and okay. I'll be Kirk, all right? Okay. All right, so they're they're loading they're loading his body up in the tube, and there's and there's the casket of all the souls that I've ever met. His was the most human. Ugh! Almost got me there. <laughs> um, no, it gets me literally every time. Uh, the the his is the most human line um, because. You know, some people say that Shatner overacts, and I'm not going to say he doesn't. But when he's not overacting, he's acting really well. <laughs> um, and in that, it really showed... He, he, you, you got the feeling like he really felt that loss. And they sold it so well that nobody was sitting there thinking, well, they're going to bring Spock back in the next movie anyway, so who gives a shit? Um, <laughs> yeah, you yeah, you yeah. felt like you really lost Spock. Like, like he lost Spock. For real? Um, so yeah, that that yeah. gets me every time. I gotta say the the one that really uh, tears me up, the one that always comes to memory is uh, Big Fish. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, oh god, yeah. I mean the the ending is really what. If you haven't seen that movie, you should. It's the only Tim Burton movie that I actually truly still like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm sure that Hollywood's figured this out by now, but um, I find that there are three, three. Heartstrings in uh, in the average male that you can tug 20, on 20, 20. fairly easily, and one of them is a story about a man and his dog. 
Oh god! Oh, like you, a boy and his dog. Like a boy and his dog. Uh, awesome. Old Yeller. Any any story where you know the main uh, character uh, has uh, a strong connection to his. Where the red fern grows. Uh, oh. <laughs> no man ever wants to see a dog get it because chances are almost every man has a very fond memory of a very loyal hound. Um, so that that gets you right in the ticker. Uh, two. Uh, Brother stories. Many of us have brothers or a close friend who was not unlike a brother to us, and that's a, a, a relationship that can also be very easily uh, exploited by Hollywood. And then, of course, in Big Fish, father-son Father stories, yeah. um, because I have met very few, if any, men in my life who have had a, a wonderful relationship with their father. Um, there's usually some turmoil one way or the other. And especially in a story that, you know, cruxes on, you know, saying goodbye and come to terms with your father's yeah. identity and how that relates to your identity. Um, yeah, no, that, that gets me every time oh, as yeah, well. It was, it was it, yeah, every the, time the, you see that, the, the they just really, like, I don't know and, how they and, did that. And we're all, and everyone's oh, there. And every, you know, as, oh, oh God, <laughs> every time. Like even, but even nobody's just, sad, like, but nobody's sad. They're all just so happy to see oh, you. Oh God. That's yeah, no that I'm gonna stop. Yeah, if if, stop if right I there. walk into a room and it's just that scene playing, even if I haven't watched the rest of the movie that day, mm -hmm. I'm still like, all right, I got I give me give me a sec. Yeah. Me so a um on that note, guys, uh, what are some uh, what are some movies that make you tear up a little yeah. bit? Get you to a little bit. What's well. uh, what makes you cry like a little baby? Yeah. Huh? Mm -hmm. Like a little nah. Nah. Not ready for the nah. real world, small child who can't control their emotions. I know, so. you're, you're a little baby. It's fine. Cries, it's fine. You know, yeah, it's I'm cool. not going to judge you. Yeah, you know, it's if you want to be a little baby. These are manly tears, yeah. okay? Tears of a man. Oh, um, and as a brief, have you seen this, have you heard about this? Key and Peele, uh, they do this, speaking of oh, manly yeah. tears, yeah. search Key and Peele, manly tears oh, God, that's a on, uh, on, on the YouTubes, and uh, you'll find something very delightful. That's yeah, pretty funny. Oh man! So questions, come on, give us some questions in the chat. Blue punch buddy. Here we're gonna pull over to Facebook here real quick just to see. Uh, uh, ba, 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 ba. Apparently, someone tried to contact me a bunch of times. No, it's just uh, Rhinus is with us in spirit. He's watching on the phone. So, thanks, Rhinus. Wow. Uh, that's uh, that's ten messages I've missed apparently from having my phone on silent. So uh, well, we're doing the show. We're doing this for you. We're doing it for you. We'll do it for you. Um, but of course, a friend of the show and a fellow producer, uh, mm -hmm. Rhinus, if you're watching, um, there's always shelter in the storm for you here. All right. So we're uh, we're in the last ten minutes. Uh, we do have a poll up uh, for those of you that are in the chat. Uh, if you switch over to poll. We have a uh, question of Jake and Trev have merch. Uh, which would you most be interested in? We have t-shirts, buttons, extras, DVD, uh, where we wouldn't be able to release our full episodes for obvious reasons, but uh, maybe like an extras DVD that has a bunch of stuff that we haven't put online or really made available. And then um, glossy pictures, time for us, mm -hmm. of our beautiful faces. Um, now, we also have been promising a big announcement. Oh. 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 And, uh, and, uh, I'm gonna leave you on that, Jake. Um, why don't you why don't you give him another uh, give him another? Have you seen this? Have you heard about this? While I uh, oh, while I check on that. All right, he's gonna he's gonna delay the uh, the inevitable here. Uh, have you seen this? Have you heard about this? Um, Michael Green. Was I gonna? I think I got I think I got like way late where I was like, wait, that's not what I was talking about. Michael Green of uh, <laughs> the guy who wrote the Green Lantern. How appropriate. Um, he is uh, going to write. Um, he is in talks to write uh, Blade Runner. And if you've seen Green Lantern, it wasn't anything spectacular. I. What's I, the opposite of spectacular? Uh, amazing. No, I'm thinking in Spider-Man terms. Uh, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> no, I, it it really it yeah. I don't know. I. I I feel like he may not be able to uh, hold out his end of the bargain as far as that's concerned. Uh, it, just seeing his writing in that. And it might be editing, too. You know, that, that's something that a lot of people don't realize is there's not one person that makes a movie. It's so there, there are directors and editors and writers and stuff, and the people that write sometimes get pissed off because the editors make such a sham of everything, you know? 
is it too much to ask to just leave a story be? Is it, like, especially with a story like Blade Runner. I mean, yeah, there are a lot of other stories you could tell in a universe like that, but what made it a unique story was the subject matter of the stories combined with the setting. And if you change either one of those, then it's either another future dystopia movie or another uh, artificial intelligence. Is it is it real intelligence? Right. Is it sentient? They've really explored... In, in Blade Runner, you have a number of things that are explored. Blade Runner 2 is just stupid. I don't yeah, know right. why you would do that. There, you're, you're, you're retreading over the ground. And plus it ended... The movie ended. It wasn't like, you know, The Matrix. Where yeah. it's like, and then, you know, and then Deckard, you know, <laughs> flies off into space or something. You know, it doesn't it, do, it doesn't have a to-be-continued feel to it. It's like, nope, that's the end of the movie. Mm-hmm. And they kind of leave it on a, on a thing there. So, I mean, that's really... That's that's the problem is that there's not really anywhere to go. Right. You, where do you go? Yeah. And where like do you Trump go said, from they, here? They they explore the the themes of the movie are like are robots human? You know, if the humans create a robot that's close enough to human, should we treat them like humans? Mm-hmm. You know, the whole scene at the end where uh, he's explaining the. Uh, you know, like all the things that I've seen, and I only get to live for three years. Like that's bullshit. Mm-hmm. Those are a lot of themes that they. What are they going to just do all that over again? They're going to be like, oh, here's here's some things from the first movie. Are they going to pull a Star Trek into darkness and just allude to a bunch of things that happened in the last movie? Because that would be shitty. Pretty dumb. Pretty it'll be, dumb. It'll be pretty dumb. Okay, but we, but we got about ten minutes here, and we want to make a few announcements. So uh, the first announcement that I think that we should bring up, and I think we brought it up last time, but not as. Uh, we're going to be working, uh, we're not going to have a video up next week, um, or we may have a video up next week, but it's for something entirely different. Um, Kickstarter. We're doing a Kickstarter. We want to possibly secure some funding from you guys in exchange for cool stuff, uh, to get the equipment that we need to make our show awesome. Did you see the season finale? It was pretty sweet. And that's what we're doing with almost nothing. Yeah. Yeah. So if we had, like, an actual green screen or a better camera or a number of other things, then we would be able to do that. Part of the Kickstarter is also to start our own website, which mm-hmm. would be very awesome. And, you know, we have some ideas for that, too. It's a little uh, out of the way, but just so you know... We're, we're not going to give you the, the Kickstarter pitch here. That's that's right. what the Kickstarter video is about. But, you know, keep keep tuned into the, relative, the relevant channels here uh, yeah. because we'll have some more information about that here. Absolutely, Jeff. Um, stay, stay tuned with us, and we will... We'll, we will get all those details to you. Mm-hmm. And there is, of course, the other uh, big announcement. Um, we have successfully, recently, uh, app- appro- been approved uh, after submitting an application to Blip. Um, so we will be joining uh, a number of other producers on Blip uh, as a venue for our series. A uh, friend of the show, the movie doctor, of course, uh, has, a, has a Blip site. Uh, uh, Minority Report Reviews has, uh, has, a, has a blip account as well. Uh, mm-hmm. Blockbuster Buster. A few other people have been uh, real gents to us. Real and, gents. And, and what does this mean for you? Well, what this means is, is that we are still going to have the first season on YouTube, along with all the other videos that we've uploaded. Um, when we do commence with the second season, all of those episodes will be going to blip directly. Mm-hmm. And we will maybe, we're still going to discuss whether we should put those on YouTube or not. Um, but we will still be doing the live show on Wednesdays unless otherwise specified, and we will also be putting those up on YouTube. Mm -hmm. So those will just go directly to YouTube. So if you miss these, if if there's a night where you're not able to come see us live or chat with us or whatever, we're still going to record the first hour. We're still going to put it up on YouTube, so you'll be able to watch it there as well. Mm -hmm. So, but, uh, it, you know, it means a better access for you on Blup, too. Blup Mm -hmm. is an excellent, uh group of people that are all making videos and uh, all, you know, you know, all, all like-minded people. There are plenty of other videos that you can go and see on there as well, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, all we ask is that you, you know, you check us out on there when we finally have all the videos up, which should be by the end of this week. We'll have the first season all up on there. Mm-hmm. So, some good stuff. Uh, it's a step in the right direction. Uh, step toward uh, bringing a little bit more revenue that we can turn around to uh, toward uh, you know making the show better uh, and that's what we want to do we yeah. want to qual- probably thanks, the most Pat. quality show we can so uh, thanks Pat yeah, thank appreciate you. it um, but uh, yeah Let's see we got about seven minutes to fill out here okay well uh, okay. I'd like to announce a special guest 
a special unexpected guest on Jake and Trev Review Everything Live. Uh, fellow black shirt, or well, fellow uh, peanut butter disaster producer, uh, the Rhinus, host of Black Shirt Beer Review. Get in here, bud! Oh, Come on in here! Oh, my God. This is, uh, this is the PBD oh, team. Damn it. See? Oh, this is not... Crashing the party. Yep. This is, uh... Hi, everybody! Yeah, if you, if you saw our season finale, you know that he was uh, in that. He also had a tie-in video for us, so uh, and you should definitely check that out, too, and all of his other videos. And I was a giant coward. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, These and, things happen. He and, needed uh, a bigger bat and wasn't able to find one at the time. And the Rhinus is going to be having some uh, big announcements coming up here, too. I'm not going to pressure him into revealing what those are now. Uh, that'd be exciting. But, uh, you know, on the other hand, maybe this is your incentive to check out Black Shirt Beer Review a little oh, more absolutely. closely and follow um, their activities as well. Yeah, we have we have most of Black Shirt Beer Review's videos on our YouTube page. So it's uh, scroll down, you'll see him there. And then uh, he's got his own YouTube uh, site where he's got his quickies up. He does uh, short beer reviews of uh, individual beers. And he also does um, uh, a number of beers for a full episode. Yep. That, that, that's, that's the long and short of it. <laughs> I, I drink beer and then tell you... What do you What do you have right now? Why don't you do well, a uh, five-minute beer? Ooh, ooh, exclusive. Oh, super, super quickie. I've got uh, the Odd Side Ales. Let's get, can you... How oh, good oh, did that go? There you go. Odd Side Ales uh, Citra Pale Ale. Mm-hmm. This is uh, actually really good. It's uh, just a straight-up pale ale with uh, single hops, just straight citra as the, you know, the label... So pretty drink. much it, it implies citra, it's, there, there are just it's just citra, uh, and it does great. I mean, it's great, great malt profile. The uh, the the actual citra comes through amazingly. It, it more or less tastes like drinking like a lime beer, but in the correct way. I'm talking to you, Bud Light Lime. <laughs> Know, this, it needs a stern talk. This is this is good stuff, and uh, if you can find this, because this is a really small place uh, out of Grand Haven, uh, Michigan. They actually just started uh, getting up here to Upper Michigan. Uh, I don't even know if you can get this outside of Michigan, but it's it's a smaller it's a smaller place. If you can find it, get it because it's delicious. Michigan, not just the Great Lakes state, the Great Beer state. Oh, that, that, so that's know. the truth. So Tagline. <laughs> Oh, uh, we, we have another question here. Um, mobile mobile gaming. gaming. Go. Go. Um, like the PSP Go? Because that can go that out can the go. window. Uh, mobile gaming, it's, uh, it's, it's changing the face of the gaming industry. Um, um, uh, no. Well, uh, <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't agree with that. I don't know. Okay, maybe not changing the face of, but it's certainly uh, making a heavy impact. I can honestly mm, say no. for one that I no, play. No, I agree. <laughs> I play more. I play more games on my phone than I do on my. Xbox oh, okay. Right now. Mobile gaming. If we're talking, that's I, mobile. I, I right? guess the Is first thing I thought of was like, was like. See, you don't even know what you're disagreeing. I thought we were talking about handhelds. No, mobile gaming. Yes, I, I. The two games I have my on my phone right now are Puzzle and Dragons and uh, Plague Incorporated. I, I as well have been playing Plague Incorporated pretty heavily. Because of you and my wife hates you, poor. <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a fun game. It's a it, no, it used to be a web game called uh, uh, Pandemic Two. So if you find a flash game called Pandemic Two, it's exactly the same as playing. You know, nothing's game. really as fun as destroying the entire world mm-hmm. in the most horrific manners, like you know, possible. Mm-hmm. It is pretty fun. Is uh, pretty fun. I myself, uh, I was able to download Chrono Trigger on my Android phone, which nice. is a super awesome game. Nice. Uh, I can't recommend it enough. Probably already recommended it once or twice on the show. I'm pretty sure. um, <laughs> Trevor and I have the same phone, and I know that there are also a few uh, Final Fantasy titles mm-hmm. available on the Chrono Android. I have I, I play the hell out of Bejeweled on my phone too. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm Rope one of those Escape. geeks. Rope Escape. If you've never played Rope Escape, that's kind of fun um, because and if you're a fan of uh, some of the uh, producers on uh, that guy with the glasses, for example, mm-hmm. if you squint your eyes a little bit, you can imagine it's Linkara who's uh, who's who's swinging around in the treetops and eventually falling and he doesn't having swear his, at all, does he? having his limbs scratched. No, not once. No, not no. once. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, I, I I think mobile gaming. I think as far as apps are concerned, they're in an entirely different league than regular video games. But they will they have been building themselves up pretty highly over the last few years. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you're talking, I thought you were talking about handhelds. Those are pretty much out. I mean, you look at the Wii U, and they basically were like, the only way we're going to sell a handheld is if it's a controller for the actual system. So yeah, no handheld. 
they, they, they've sucked since the Lynx. You know, that that's about the last good one that I actually remember. The, the Atari Lynx? Really? Yeah, no, it was awesome. Nobody like, had an Atari, Atari Lynx. I had an Atari Lynx. Are you saying I'm nobody? I'm, I'm saying I don't believe you. <laughs> <laughs> I like the no, uh, the Nomad was fun, but that was just a handheld Sega. So I had a mean. Game Boy Color and everything. It was like, man. Whatever. The Advance. I like the Advance. I like the 3DS, but I don't really think they've released much more than their re-release of uh, yeah, I mean, Time unless, and, but, yeah, but unless, Resident Evil. Unless you're a Pokemon player, I, I, I think that the mobile, like, the handheld mobiles mm-hmm. are more or less dead water. And on the other hand, when you're talking about games that are played on phones, um, you, right, of course, you, of course, run into the really big problem of control problems. And so the complexity of the game is going to be extremely limited by what kind of inputs and how fine you can control it. Right. Um, even playing Chrono Trigger is kind of a son of a bitch because, uh, Wrap it up. because as you're moving things around, it doesn't want to respond the way that a SNES controller would at all. So all right. um, they got to improve that. Okay. So, uh, and also, no, I'm just kidding. Oh, my God. Okay, so uh, that's it for the recorded portion. Uh, if you're here, we're going to be sticking around for a little bit and just talking out our butts. But uh, otherwise, uh, I'm Jake. I'm Trev. Uh, I'm Rydus. And, and uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for watching, guys. Cheers.